Hey ladies, we are going to be in Jeremiah chapter 18 today. If you have your refined book, I'm going to be talking about a few of the questions on page 68. And if you don't have your refined book, just open your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 18. So I'm going to be picking up in verse 18. In the beginning of Jeremiah chapter chapter 18, there's a lot of lessons that you can learn about the potter and the clay. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that in this video because I really want to talk about the power of the tongue. Um, and you'll understand why I'm talking about that in a minute, don't worry. <laughs> so, in Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 18, it says, Then they said, Come and let us devise plans against Jeremiah, for the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us attack him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. So a little bit of context building up in this chapter, Jeremiah, God through Jeremiah, had been spending abundant time telling the people that they needed to repent, that they weren't worshiping God correctly. For example, in chapter 18, verse 15, it says, Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to worthless idols, and they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in pathways and not on a highway. So these people were not worshiping God the way he wanted to worship. And Jeremiah was the vessel that God was using to tell the people that they needed to repent and come back to him, come back to the ancient ways that God had wanted, that he had written in his word that he wanted. So these people, instead of being receptive to that message, in verse 18, they say, Come and let us attack him with the tongue. I don't know about you, but I have been attacked with the tongue like these people were planning to do in Jeremiah, and it is awful. That old saying that we used to say as kids, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never hurt me, that was never true for me. <laughs> I, I think one of my love languages is um, words of affirmation, and so when I get words of negativity, it destroys me sometimes, and I have to be very careful not to not to spend a lot of time carrying what people think when they're saying hurtful things. Um, but it's also taught me to make sure that the words I'm saying are made for building up and encouraging, not tearing down. I want to make some application from the book of James in, James in the New Testament. So let's turn there in our Bibles. It says in James chapter 3, verse 3, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire or world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Chapter 3 of James shows how powerful the tongue can be. Although it's small, it can have a tremendous power for good or evil in our lives. Um, in verse 5, it says that it's a fire, a world of iniquity. Um, it can be used to burn people in the book, not physically, but spiritually. And today, we might find ourselves in the same shoes as Jeremiah. When we are speaking the word of God to other people, they might want to say, let's go destroy her with our tongues, and not literally mean it like they meant it in the book of Jeremiah. But a lot of times, people who are presenting the authentic word of God are called judgmental. They're told that they don't have love, um, and they're faced with a lot of other words that people just use to destroy them. And so on the flip side, I want to ask you, if someone like Jeremiah were to come to you, obviously there's not any prophets today because we have the word of God, but if someone has built up the word of God within them and they're telling you something that you need to change, what is your response? Are you defensive? Because I know that sometimes in my life when I'm defensive, it's because I need to change something. Or are you teachable? And if you're not teachable, I would encourage you to take in... To to account what they're saying to you. Check it with the Word of God, and if it's true, ask yourself why you're not doing it. One thing that has also helped me is to reflect on the way I speak daily. If I find myself speaking super negative or talking constantly about someone and gossiping, I've had to stop and wonder why. Because Jesus in Luke says, out of the heart, the mouth flows. And so if out of your mouth constantly is slowing negativity and things that destroy and don't build up, 
There's a reason for that. But I just want to ask you, what type of response would you have? Would you be like the people who wanted to destroy Jeremiah with their words? Or would you be on Jeremiah's side? And would you want to unite with him and spread the truth of God's word? And I also want to leave you with this. A well-timed compliment can completely change someone's life. Your words are so powerful. So check yourself with the word of God. Build up the word within you. Remember things like, let's see, Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are like honeycomb. And death and life are in the tongue. So take measures today to control your tongue and to pay special attention to the words that come out of your mouth. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.